everyone. Hope you're all doing well. I'm coming to you from wonderful Mongolia, and I want to talk about the Panasonic S9 that was just released a few days ago. I've been watching a few videos and people have been seemingly not happy. Well, for a lot of people who did the reviews, they're saying that it's lacking in some areas. And from what I saw in the presentation and from what I think the camera is based upon what Panasonic is saying, I think it's a pretty decent camera for those who are going to do social media and so on to shoot. Um, I think a lot of us who've been shooting for a while and up on the camera spec, whether you're enthusiast or professional, you probably look at this camera and go, eh, why? Before we begin, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support the channel, there are links for items to purchase in the description area of each video. I added my perspective to a couple channels that put some information about this camera, and I just want to, you know, give you guys my own spin on it. And I shouldn't say spin, my, my take. Because what, when I saw this camera, it's certainly not something that I would be looking for, but the thing that caught my eye is the fact that it's using the same sensor from the S5 Mark II, and they're allowing you to do 6K open gates. Now, yes, you can do this thing for a limited amount of time, like on the S5 and S5-2X, and it cuts back in some of the features. There's no EVF. So, yeah, it is compromised somewhat, but I think if you look at the younger generation and what they like, you know, most of the screen stuff works for them. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you've probably heard me talk about when I see folks on the streets shooting with mirrorless cameras and they look at the screen and like look into the viewfinder. You know, I think that more and more is becoming a thing. I know there were some cameras that came out in the past that had a big screen on the back and it was kind of like a phone plus a camera. Well, not really a phone, some kind of Android device but it didn't go over too well. And I think maybe it was too early for that kind of thing. But here we are in a time frame where a lot younger people are now doing videos online. TikTok, Facebook, all these things are starting to take off. You two have shorts and you don't have to be an expert. You just need some kind of device that can record you and you can post. And a lot of people, you know, are not expert with cameras. They use their phone camera and they shoot. Perfect example, my wife. You know, I ask her sometimes to film me and usually we end up having to do multiple takes because she starts to move back and forth, zoom in, zoom out and do all kinds of things. I'm like, why do you do that? You shouldn't be reframing when you're filming. But when she's doing it on her phone, you know, and she taps it and she slides in, it looks nice and smooth when she does the video. I'm like, hmm. So she's, Pretty decent with the phone and taking her own videos and so on. Slap a mirrorless in her hand. Now, everything just goes sideways. Now, while I sometimes sit here and I do multiple takes and cut them up, usually I'll try to go for like one straight shot and then chop it up if I make a mistake or misspoke or said something that was incorrect. Or sometimes I may miss it during the editing process and I put some text on it. Some of us aren't perfect with some of these things. And some people, you know, for the social media stuff that I've been seeing, a lot of time it's a quick 10 second, 30 second. And some of these things have million plus views. The production quality is not the same as, you know, those of us who want to get like proper mics and or, you know, shotgun mics or whatever to put on there, external screen so you can see yourself. All these things that we need, a lot of these young folks don't. They just work with the simple stuff, the basic stuff, and it works for them. So if this is not a camera that you're thinking about, it's not a big thing, you know, don't knock it so hard. Let the people who want it buy it. And, you know, some of the comments I'm seeing, oh, it's a failure, you know, Panic Sonic did a bad job. You know, when the ZVE-1 was being released, people said the same thing. It's gonna overheat, and yes, it does, but unless you are doing really long form videos, you'll be fine. I talk about my Z8, which in good condition can well, record for two hours and five minutes, but you've seen my videos where I talk about the fact that I'm in Chiang Mai in Thailand, where it's, what is it, 40 degrees sometimes, 40 plus degrees, and it gets hot. And after 20 minutes of recording, you get overheat warning on the camera. So it can happen. And this camera has no fan inside of it. 
So it's all in the, how you use your equipment. I've seen some folks sit in front there and hit the button record and come back and start talking. And they don't edit out that stuff. But again, we're talking about people who are younger. They're just recording and posting. Is it perfect? No. We can clearly see that they reach up there and they, you know, they start recording, they reach up there and they stop the recording. They got the views still. I know I would like to make my stuff look really good. Like, you know, some of the big YouTubers out there and everything looks smooth and everything runs well. Most of us want to do that, but do you always need to? And clearly from what we're seeing, some of these TikTok videos or, you know, YouTube shorts, you get the views. The content is what's most important. Sure. We would love to see, you know, some beautiful looking transitions and some nice B-rolls. That helps. But you don't really need to do it. And I think this camera now gives folks an option to step up their game. Yeah, it's probably a little bit pricier, but, you know, for some folks who are buying an iPhone um, 15, 14 Pro Max and going up to a terabyte with a space, you're pretty much right there. So, yeah, maybe you are, you know, a little bit more well-to-do and you can afford it. Or for some people, it's not that big of a deal. It's an investment for the long term, you know, not a major thing. Personally, you know, when I saw it, I thought about some things that I could do with it. But yes, like most of you, the fan or no fan thing, yeah. If I'm out shooting, shooting B-roll outside, I'm not going for several minutes at a time. I can get some clips. So it seemed like it could work. They have darn good iris inside that stuff. And, you know, most of the point and shoot cameras that we know, they don't have good iris, if any iris at all. Usually it's only electronic stabilization. So there's some really good stuff in this camera that I think will help people out. And the price point, you know, certainly we would wish for it to be cheaper, but come on guys, times are changing. As you put more tech in cameras, the likelihood is the price is gonna go up. That's just normal. Would you really expect that a vlogging camera would cost $2,200? So the ZV-E1. Yeah, it used a sensor from the A7, um, S3, FX3, did it need to have it? Some people like, hey, it's on a 12 megapixel sensor, it should cost that much, but performance of it is great. So it just comes down to your use case and what you, you know, plan on doing with the gear. So that's just my take. Let me know in the comments, what do you think? Is there something that you want to get? Something you think your family members get? Well, and if you don't like it, you hate it, share that also. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.